when you get an offer from a distributor to distribute your film, you're going to get a long list of deliverables from them, so items that you have to provide for them to be willing to distribute the film. Uh, some of these deliverables are going to be technical items that relate to your film. So, you know, uh, stereo and 5.1 audio mix, for example. But some of them are going to be legal deliverables. One thing that often comes as a rude shock to filmmakers is that the distributor is probably going to require you to provide what are called clearance reports. Uh, for example, title reports, copyright reports, script, script clearance reports, and so forth. Uh, the purpose of these clearance reports is to try to make sure that the film doesn't infringe upon the rights of any third parties and basically cause the distributor to get sued. Um, the thinking is that if the distributor is going to put a bunch of money and time into putting your film into theaters and on VOD platforms and things of that nature, they want to make sure that they're not going to lose the entire value of their investment because somebody is able to get millions of dollars in copyright infringement damages against them. In this video, I'm going to talk about what clearance reports are and how to hopefully get them done affordably. But first, before we get started with that, um, a couple of disclaimers. Number one, as I always say, this isn't legal advice because if I were going to give you legal advice, I would have to know about your specific situation and your specific needs. And right now I'm just a lawyer talking to you on the internet. Uh, and second, if you made your film outside the United States, or if you're planning to get your film distributed outside the United States, then the kind of legal rules that I talk about in this video might not necessarily apply to you. Finally, if you appreciate the content in this video, please like the video and subscribe to this channel so I can keep providing this kind of educational content to enterprising young indie filmmakers like yourself. Anyway, what are clearance reports? Uh, usually these reports deal with potential infringements of intellectual property rights, so copyright and trademark again, but sometimes they also discuss whether the film is at risk of infringing somebody's so-called common law rights. Like, um, for instance, if the content of the film could be considered defamatory or to invade somebody's privacy. Sometimes the distributor will also want you to write what's called an opinion letter. Uh, an opinion letter is basically a letter that a lawyer writes saying that in the lawyer's considered legal judgment, your film is not going to infringe upon anybody's legal rights. Uh, and even if your distributor doesn't ask for any of those things, the distributor will almost certainly ask you to get what's called E&O or errors and omissions insurance, which is insurance that protects you against lawsuits essentially based on the contents of your film, for instance, for copyright or trademark infringement. Uh, to get E&O insurance, you're going to have to work with an insurance broker who will deal with an insurance company on your behalf. Uh, the broker will probably tell you that you'll need one or more of the type of clearance reports that I'm talking about here in the video uh, in order to get insurance coverage. Or at the very least, they'll say that if you aren't able to get one of these reports, then the premium that you're going to have to pay uh, is going to have to go up, or there are going to have to be certain things that are excluded from coverage and so on. So if you're going to get your indie film distributed, you're very likely going to have to deal with this issue of clearance reports. So what are the specific types of clearance report that you're probably going to have to provide? Uh, first, let's talk about the title report. What is what is that? Uh, a title report is a report talking about whether there's a risk that the title of your film, the name of your film, is going to infringe the rights of a third party. Specifically, this type of report deals with copyright and trademark. Uh, to put together a title report, you hire a vendor and they run searches in a bunch of different databases to see if other creative works use the same title as your film or they, if they use a, a title that's similar to your film. Uh, databases that the vendor will search usually include the U.S. Copyright Office, the Library of Congress, um, imdb.com, and the uh, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. When the search does come up with another creative work, um, such as a movie, a stage play, or a book, or, or something like that, that has the same or a similar title to your film, then the vendor will note that in the report. So the report's basically going to be a list of creative works that have the same title or a similar title to your film. Uh, what the report won't tell you is the legal implications of this. Uh, they won't be able to tell you whether the fact that some other film uses the same or a similar title is going to result in you infringing somebody's rights. Uh, and in fact, the mere fact that another film or a piece of music or stage play or something like that has the same or a similar title to your film doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to infringe the, uh, the intellectual property rights of the maker of that creative work. Uh, usually, and it may be comforting for you to hear this, um, you can't actually copyright or trademark the title of a movie. There are a couple of exceptions to this, like there always are, you know, annoyingly enough in the law. Um, one of these is when there's a series of films that use the same title, like the Avengers series or the, or the Fast and the Furious series or something like that. Um, 
then if you're dealing with a series, you may be able to get uh, trademark protection for the title of the series as a whole. Uh, another is when the title of the film has, to use trademark law jargon, acquired secondary meaning. So that means it's become so well known in, that the general public has come to associate the title of the film with a particular author. Uh, take The Shining, for example. Right? That's a movie that people have come to associate with the director, Stanley Kubrick, and with the writer of the novel that it's based on, Stephen King. Um, and if someone else went out and used the movie title, The Shining, then the average person would be likely to think that they were making a remake of Stanley Kubrick's original Shining. Uh, and that kind of situation is where the holder of the famous mark can get a trademark. Uh, but anyway, to figure out the legal implications of the title report, um, that is whether there's actually any risk of infringing upon somebody else's rights, you'll need to have a lawyer look at the report. Um, depending on the distributor's requirements, you may be able to just give the title report to the distributor and they'll have their own attorneys look at the report and you know draw their own conclusions. But some distributors or some insurance brokers uh, won't be satisfied with just getting the title report. They're going to require you to have a lawyer uh, draft what's called a title opinion letter. Um, in a title opinion letter, the lawyer is going to talk about, after reviewing the title report, whether in their considered judgment, uh, your use of the title is likely to infringe the rights of some third party, the, the copyright or, or trademark rights of some third party. Uh, this is not to be confused with a chain of title opinion letter, uh, which is a different type of opinion letter that you may have the, the privilege of being able to do. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Uh, what's a good place to get a title report done? Um, I'm not getting paid to say this at all. They, they're not sponsoring this video, but the Clearance Lab is a great source of affordable and fast title opinions. I think you can um, get them within seven calendar days from the Clearance Lab, and perhaps you can get them even more quickly if you pay like an expedited processing fee. Uh, so next, let's talk about copyright reports. Um, in a distribution agreement, you, the production company, will have to promise the distributor that you have the copyright in the film that you're going to assign them the right to distribute so that your release of the film won't infringe the copyright of someone else and someone else won't be able to copy your film. Uh, the copyright report is meant to verify that what you're telling the distributor, that this promise that you're making the distributor, uh, that you're the copyright holder is accurate. The vendor who does the copyright report is going to check the U.S. Copyright Office database to see if there's evidence that, well, number one, you've registered a copyright in the film and in the screenplay, and number two, if someone else has attempted to register a copyright in the same film and, or, and the screenplay, which is, of course, going to create the kind of conflict that the distributor really doesn't want to see. Now, your distributor will probably ask as well for a certificate saying that you've registered the copyright, so I may not need to tell you this, but ideally, before you get into talks with a distributor, uh, you should register a copyright, uh, ideally in both the screenplay for your film and in the film itself. How do you do this? It's pretty simple. You need to go to copyright.gov slash registration. Uh, and from there, the uh, website will guide you through the process of registering a copyright. The whole thing is pretty straightforward, and I don't personally think you have to be a lawyer to understand it. You basically just input information about the author of the work, whether it's the script or the film, and then you upload either the screenplay as a PDF or you upload a video file of the movie and you pay a small fee. Uh, you do need to know that a script is considered a work of the performing arts for copyright registration purposes. Uh, a feature film falls into the category of motion picture slash audiovisual work. Uh, you'll need to put this information in uh, on the U.S. Copyright Office website. Uh, unless the Copyright Office has any sort of issues with your application, you, you should expect within about a month's time to get a certificate back from the Copyright Office saying that you are now the proud owner of a registered copyright in your film. Anyway, the copyright report that your distributor asks for is meant to make sure that your copyright is properly registered, uh, that you've gone through this process, in other words, that I just talked about, and that no one else is claiming to be the author of the same screenplay or film. You can also get a copyright report done through the clearance lab uh, pretty quickly and affordably again. Number three, the script clearance report. In a script clearance report, the vendor you hire to do it is going to read your script, usually charging some amount per page, uh, to decide whether there is a risk that uh, the material in the script is going to violate somebody's copyright or trademark or their common law rights. Again, uh, defamation, invasion of privacy, things of that nature. If your film is a documentary, and the narrator, let's say they suggest that somebody is a murderer or a child abuser, like somebody who's discussed in the film. Let's say it's like a, a true crime type of documentary. Uh, the vendor will probably look at that in the script and say that it creates a potential risk of defamation. 
Uh, defamation means a false statement about somebody that is harmful to their reputation. Uh, in other words, in this example, the person who gets called a murderer or a child abuser in the documentary um, might sue the production company or the distributor for defamation, uh, saying that the suggestion that they've committed these crimes is harmful to their reputation and is false. Um, again, the clearance report, like the title report and the other reports that we've talked about, doesn't draw any actual legal conclusions about whether your film will or will not violate somebody's rights. Um, just like with the title and copyright reports, a lawyer is going to have to look at the report uh, if you want a comprehensive understanding of, of the risks that you're facing. What's the best time to get a clearance report done? Um, many indie filmmakers are not aware of this, but it's actually before you start shooting the film. The reason is that if you wait until after the film has been shot and edited to get the report done, and the report identifies a significant legal risk in the script, it may end up being expensive or, or harmful to the quality of your film to have to either, I don't know, reshoot a couple of scenes, which is disastrous from an indie film perspective, or to creatively try to edit around the line that the report has identified as potentially offending. Now, you may not be able to fit a script clearance report into your production budget. I mean, in many indie films, they can barely afford to just shoot the film. They don't have a lot of you know discretionary funds left to do this kind of thing. Uh, in that case, you may just have to try to deal with this you know, and hope for the best at the point where you're looking for distribution and, and e o insurance. But I just want to make sure you're aware that this may come up so that you can make an informed decision early on in the process. Finally, you might also be required by the distributor or the insurer to produce a script clearance opinion letter uh, from an attorney who's going to think about the legal implications of the potential issues that are identified in the script clearance report. I know the number of reports and letters that you have to produce to get your film distributed can seem kind of ridiculous. And in some cases it is, but you know, it's better that you be informed about this than to be shocked by this you know, huge deliverable list that you have to provide to the distributor. Uh, finally, we'll talk about what's called a chain of title report. Sometimes this is also presented as a chain of title affidavit or declaration, where you or your attorney declare under penalty of perjury that the contents of the documents are, are correct. In, in this type of report, the author, who's usually an attorney, confirms that you, the production company, have the rights necessary to allow you to give the distributor the ability to distribute it. Uh, in other words, that all of the rights that you need to make and release this film have been assigned to you by the various people who participated in making it. Uh, for example, the screenwriter has assigned you, the production company, the right to use their script to make the movie. The cast members have all signed agreements saying that you have the right to use the footage that you shot of them. Uh, the composer who did your music has assigned you the right to use the music in your film, and so on. Uh, the report is going to list or summarize all of the agreements that assign the production company the rights necessary to make the film. Usually you have to give copies of all of these contracts to your distributor as well, so that they can make their own you know, independent determination about whether the chain of title to the film is clear. Uh, again, the goal of this is to minimize the distributor's risk of liability. The distributor needs to be uh, certain that the writer of the film is not going to be able to come back and claim that they didn't have the right to use their screenplay to make the film, um, or that people are who are interviewed in the film, let's say that it's a documentary, for instance, are not going to be able to come back and say, hey, I never gave you the right to use the interview, the interview footage of me in the film. Uh, if it turns out that you don't have one or more of the contracts that you need, say, for example, that you forgot to have one of your supporting actors sign a contract, um, that's not necessarily the end of the world. Uh, usually the people who worked on your film are going to want to make sure that they can see their work up on the big screen, and they're going to understand that they need to help you get the film distributed if they want to make that happen. So I hope that you found this discussion of the clearance reports that you may need to get your indie film distributed helpful, and thank you for watching.